The mean value theorem is probably the most important result in differential calculus. It states that if we have a function f that is continuous on a closed interval a, b, and it's differentiable on the open interval a, b, then there must be a point c between a and b at which the derivative of the function f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So the mean value theorem tells us that if we have a function that is continuous on some closed interval a, b, and is differentiable for every x between a and b, the endpoint values need not be the same, but the derivative must exist between um, a and b at all points, then if we connect the endpoints on the graph um, over this closed interval, we'll get a secant line whose slope is computed easily by the rise over run and is found to be f of b minus f of e a over b minus a. According to the mean value theorem, there will be a point c between a and b at which the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function equals this slope. So there will be a point here on the graph at which the tangent line is parallel to that secant line. So the tangent line will have a slope that is f prime of c and it is equal to the slope of that secant line. It will happen exactly at this point c between a and b. Now the mean value theorem has these two important assumptions, conditions, f being continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. They are both crucial and important. If we let go of either of them, the mean value theorem won't apply. To give, you, to give you examples and show you why this is the case, let's see first, if we let go of continuity on the closed interval, we can have a function like this, which is uh, differentiable in the open interval, but it is not continuous on the closed interval as it has this uh, whole discontinuity at one of the endpoints. The slope of the secant line connecting the endpoints, as you see, is zero. It's a horizontal secant line. Nevertheless, the derivative of the function, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at every point between negative two and two at the end point, between the endpoints, is never zero, is a constant positive value for this function. So this is why continuity in the closed interval is important. Uh, let me show you why differentiability on the open interval is important. So for that we can uh, call on our old friends the uh, absolute value of x. It is continuous on any uh, closed interval that you consider. So here I cons I'm considering negative 2 and 2 between those values. It is continuous, um, but it is not differentiable at every point between negative 2 and 2 because 0 is included there and at 0 we know that the derivative does not exist. Therefore we end up with the situation where the slope of the secant line connecting the endpoints of the graph is 0, but the derivative of the function will never be 0 between the, um, on the open interval uh, at the points where the derivative exists. So this is why uh, differentiability is important on the open interval. Now the mean value theorem has a lot, lot of important consequences. I will just mention two of them. Uh, the first one is that if we have a function whose derivative is zero at all points in an open interval, then the function must be constant on that open interval. And a consequence of this is that if we have two functions whose derivatives are equal for all x, then the two functions must be differ by only a constant, namely, if we have f prime of x equals g prime of x for all x, then f of x must be g of x plus a constant c. Now, this is enough for now, let's solve some problems. Confirm that the function f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 meets the criteria of the mean value theorem over the closed interval between 1 and 3 and then find the number c that satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. I hope you paused it and then we input it c equals 2. We'll find that value in a moment, but first check, let's check that the criteria are indeed being met. So this is a polynomial function, which is differentiable everywhere, so it is continuous everywhere. Um, namely, it is continuous then on the closed interval between 1 and 3, and it's differentiable on the open interval between 1 and 3. So both criteria of the mean value theorem are being satisfied here. Um, therefore, there must be a point C at which the derivative is equal to the slope of the secant line that connects the two endpoints on the graph of the function 
um, over this closed interval. So let's call, um, compute that slope first. We need the endpoint values. So f of 1 at x equals 1, we have 3 minus 4 plus 1, which is 0. Whereas f of 3, so at x equals 3, we, has, we have 3 times 3 squared, so that's 27, minus 4 times 3, that's 12, 27 minus 12, that's 15, plus 1, that is 16. So the slope of the secant line that connects the endpoints on the graph over this closed interval is f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1, that is 16 minus 0 over 3 minus 1, or 16 over 2, that is 8. And so according to the mean value theorem, there must be a point between 1 and 3, a number, at which the derivative of the function is exactly that slope 8. So let's compute the derivative of the function. By the differentiation rules, we get 6x minus 4 for the derivative. And indeed, if we check where this number uh, is attained by the derivative, uh, where the derivative becomes 8, uh, solving for x, we get 6x equals 12 or x equals 2. So indeed, there is this uh, value, c equals 2, at which the derivative of the function is equal to the slope of the secant line that connects the endpoints of the graph over this closed interval. Let's look at the next question. A car traveled 108 kilometers between two cities in exactly two hours. Is it true or false that at some time during the journey the car speed was precisely 90 km per hour? So pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and have realized that this is true indeed. If we take the distance a car travels as a function of time and assume a few things that are needed for the mean value theorem to work, so this is distance measured in kilometers during t hours into the journey, then it's natural to assume that this distance function is continuous over the closed interval between 0 and 2 hours. Not being continuous distance would, be, uh, would mean that the function, that the car is teleporting, which it is not. Um, Assuming that it is a differentiable function on the open interval between 0 and 2 is simply uh, assuming that the car has a well-defined speed at every moment in time. So these two natural conditions lead to the mean value theorem being applicable and it says that there exists a moment in time between 0 and 2 hours such that the derivative of the distance function at that time must be equal to the slope of the secant line that connects the endpoints on the graph of this function over the closed interval between 0 and 2. If we calculate the distance, the change in the distance is 180 kilometers, whereas the change in time is 2 hours. So 180 over 2 is 90 kilometers per hour. So there was indeed at least one moment in time at which the car speed was exactly 90 kilometers per hour. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.